In a previous video, we talked about the security vulnerabilities associated with the rapid rise of IoT devices. Now let's talk about a few unique IoT-specific cyber attacks. Let's progress from lowest severity attacks to highest severity attacks. If you're interested in in-depth cybersecurity analysis, check out our website, where we post videos analyzing just about every type of cyber attack, including IoT attacks, cyber warfare and cyber espionage, crypto heists, spyware, ransomware, and data breaches. The link is in the description. IoT devices make easy nodes for botnet. These botnets are often used for DDoS attacks. Well, this is nothing new, but more and more IoT devices are being connected to the internet every day. In a previous video, we talked about inventory, patching, and configuration being problems associated with IoT devices. Also, these IoT devices are commonly not monitored, making them soft targets to incorporate into a botnet. Typically, threat actors scan for vulnerabilities, install malware, reconfigure to their use, or exploit command injection vulnerabilities. They usually host scanners to find and harvest new bots. Doing it on their own server provides more flexibility and adds a wide variety of infection methods, including brute forcing SSH servers and exploiting other known security weaknesses. Typically, the threat actors then use those compromised devices or bots to port scan for Telnet and other services to attempt to brute force them and gain access to even more devices. Typically, a single command and control server controls all the devices, which can be in the hundreds of thousands. Then they use those devices to make outbound requests at their target. For example, let's go back to 2016. The Mirai botnet caused one of the largest internet outages in US history. The botnet was comprised of over 600,000 IoT devices that conducted a DDoS targeting the DIN managed DNS servers. Mirai is an open source malware that scans for default factory set credentials on devices. It compromises weak IoT devices to use in large scale DDoS attacks. The DDoS was targeted at DIN's DNS servers. It's caused outages of social media sites, news sites, and other sites. By 2021, Mirai was known for targeting a known command injection vulnerability in various Hikvision video surveillance devices. It was using these surveillance devices to carry out other DDoS attacks. As of 2022, 80,000 cameras are still believed to be vulnerable to command injection because up to 2,300 organizations across 100 countries have still not applied the patch since the vulnerability was discovered in 2021. A more recent example is in July 2022, Imperfect blocked a massive DDoS attack with over 25.3 billion requests that targeted a Chinese telecom company that lasted over 4 hours. It averaged 1.8 million requests per second, and it peaked at 3.9 million requests per second. It was launched from a botnet of around 170,000 compromised routers, servers, security cameras, and other IoT devices, located in 189 countries including the US, Indonesia, and Brazil. IoT devices can be used to hide the origin IP address of other cyber attacks. For example, from 2020 to 2021, Chinese state-sponsored hackers installed fast reverse proxy to forward malicious traffic from compromised DVR and IP cameras to hide the true origin of their traffic that was targeting Indian critical infrastructure. China used this method to place remote access malware in the Indian power grid. This method of using IoT devices as a proxy can also be used as an entry point in networks to deploy ransomware, malware, exfiltrate data, and perform other cyber attacks. The line blurs a little bit here, but honorable mention is ransomware targeting industrial IoT, whether it's supply chain or direct. Since many of the industrial control systems rely on traditional IT to host their user interfaces, they are vulnerable to ransomware, which could result in a loss of control of those industrial systems, or loss of inventory and billing like we saw with the Colonial Pipeline. In 2021, Ryuk Ransomware hit the industrial IoT company Value, which provides IoT infrastructure as well as management, software, and technology for critical infrastructure. It impacted Value's files, databases, and applications, which impacted some of the front-end customer platforms. Applications providing infrastructure to water and wastewater facilities in over 200 Norwegian municipalities, covering around 85% of the country's population, were shut down. It's unclear if they were shut down from the ransomware or shut down from value proactively shutting down systems to prevent the spread. It's conceivable a ransomware infection could happen to computers hosting the industrial control system interfaces, although there's no breach disclosure laws requiring them to disclose that publicly since it doesn't affect people's data. Industrial IoT and industrial control system hijacking attacks are the most severe. Another example is a 2021 attack on the Oldsmar, Florida water treatment facilities. The security firm Dragos reported that an Oldsmar City employee reportedly visited a compromised website that was hosting malicious code that was targeting water utilities. Code was inserted into the footer of a WordPress-based website associated with the Florida Water Infrastructure Construction Company. It was compromised for a few months before discovery. Threat actors then used that compromised website to fingerprint the Ultimar City systems so they could later impersonate the systems and avoid detection. 
Hackers then exploited poor password hygiene, likely buying credentials off the dark web to gain remote access to the network. And then they exploited an outdated Windows 7 system to compromise the TeamViewer software that it was hosting that is used to remotely manage water treatment control systems. The threat actors then attempted to poison the water with lye, but luckily employees intervened with physical controls. A very similar attack happened in San Francisco in January 2021. Hackers used a former employee's credentials to access the control systems of a local water treatment facility, again via TeamViewer. They then deleted the computer programs that were involved with the control systems. It was discovered the next day according to a report compiled by the Northern California Regional Intelligence Center. The U.S. is not the only one who's had their water treatment plants targeted. In April 2020, hackers suspected to be affiliated with the Iranian regime targeted Israeli water treatment plants. Hackers routed their attempted attack through servers in the United States and Europe, according to the Washington Post. They eventually gained access to the primary logic controller and industrial control systems, and attempted an increased level of chlorine in the water supply systems that supply part of the Israeli population. Employees intervened, once again, using physical controls. A similar attack also happened in June that targeted the agriculture water systems in Israel. And then in December 2020, Iranian threat actors exploited an authentication bypass vulnerability to access the recycled water control systems. Another possible deadly attack is the 2014 German steel mill attack. According to the 2015 annual report from the German Federal Office of Information Security, hackers infiltrated the German steel mill's business network via a spear phishing attack and tricked a user into clicking a link that implanted a malware into his system. Once the attackers gained access, they moved around until they accessed the industrial control systems. While the report didn't give many details, they caused several industrial system failures and the operators were unable to shut down the blast furnace properly and ultimately resulted in a fire. One more example of IoT being hijacked is the Ukrainian power grid attack, which we covered in depth in a previous video. Russian state-sponsored hackers caused power edges by opening up breakers at three Ukrainian power distribution companies. Hey, before we go, don't forget to check out our website for more cybersecurity analysis. The link is in the description.